Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Kaiser Permanente success factors, and they are unique. Now, if we're going to talk about healthcare finance, we have to know about the Kaiser Permanente health system. Now, it has 12 million members, and as many of you already know, it is a combination of a health insurance company, a health plan that collects premium, and they have the doctors and the hospitals and the clinics and the nurses, so they actually deliver care as well. So they are truly a fully integrated healthcare system, okay? Now, they've got 22,000 doctors, they have 211,000 employees total, they've got 39 hospitals, they have 680 doctor's offices. They are obviously, as many of you know, mostly in California, but they're also heavily in Washington State and Oregon. They're also in Colorado. They're also in Georgia and the Atlanta area. And then they're also in the Washington, D.C. metro area in Maryland and Northern Virginia as well. Now, there's a fantastic slide presentation that gives an overview of the entire Kaiser Permanente health system. I will leave a link to it in the show notes. One of the things that really struck me were the success factors of Kaiser Permanente that they list themselves. And as I was looking at them, they really struck me as unique for an integrated health plan and hospital system. Now, number one, they have a clear agreed upon mission. And the key word here is agreed upon by the administration, by the doctors, by the nurses, by the support staff, by everybody else. Okay, and what is that agreed upon mission? High quality, affordable health care for the improvement of health of their patients and their communities with the key word there being affordable. If you look at the missions of many of the major healthcare systems in America, nowhere at all do you find the word affordable ever, whether it be profit or nonprofit, okay? So that is unique. They realize that they need, and forget about being affordable, let's just call it being good stewards, right? So they just say being good stewards is part of their mission, and they agree upon that. Okay, number two, what is also unique? Clinical leadership. In other words, the docs and the nurses, they lead. They lead. What is that? That's the Mayo model, right? The, the, one of the keys to Mayo success is clinical leadership as well, okay? Not like other hospitals, right? We've talked about how, and I'll leave a link to it in the show notes, how the boards of directors of most of their hospitals, they don't have hardly any clinicians on it. Most, a lot of the administrative staff, that like are the executive C-suite, not clinicians at all. So arguably, that is unique among Kaiser in having this clinical leadership. Okay, next up, aligned structure and incentives. Again, they own a health plan. They are capitated, okay? They are aligned as opposed to you might have a doctor that has one particular um, goal, but you might have a nurse with a different goal. You might have a CFO with yet another goal, right? The, it, is, it is the goal of many of the constituents within the hospital to increase the hospital's revenue as much as possible, as I have displayed in many A Healthcare Z videos. Okay, because Kaiser is collecting premium and has to compete on the insurance market for premiums for individuals and employers, they're not trying to jack up the cost of healthcare as much as humanly possible. They have aligned incentives with the marketplace and their patients and their customers, the employers. Okay, next up, integrated technology. Believe it or not, across the entire Kaiser Permanente Health System, they have 100% EMR access. That means that if you go into the emergency room, if you go into a clinic, if you talk to a doctor or nurse on the phone, they all have access to the same electronic medical record information. Okay? At most other health systems, that is not true. Even if it is all under one like name, a lot of times they use, sometimes they use dozens of different electronic medical rest record systems that do not always talk to each other because these health systems have grown by acquisition and they haven't necessarily integrated their EMRs. I can tell you, even at Hopkins when I was there, the main hospital EMR had no connection whatsoever to the clinic EMRs. They were made by two completely separate companies. Now they may have fixed that, but even at a huge place like Hopkins, that was a huge deal. That is what they're coming to. That is a key to their success. Now they have another key to success, which is measurement, constant improvement. I think that's probably pretty consistent across other hospitals as well. Okay, fine, let's judge the tree by its fruit. What are the results? Okay, 
Kaiser Permanente is the highest rated health plan by members in America, according to J.D. Powers, okay? It is the highest rated health plan in America for commercially insured people, okay? Now, they are in the 85th percentile as measured by HEDA scores, and that's another conversation for another day for diabetes care. They're in the 91st percentile for cardiovascular care. They're in the 89th, so in terms of like actual care, you'd be like, oh, well, they're just skimping on care. That's how they're making money, right, is by skimping on care. Look, they're way above the, the 50th percentile. They're way above average, okay? So if they were really trying to collect premium and skimp on care, would they really be the 85th percentile and the 91st percentile? Probably not, okay. 89th percentile for cervical cancer screening, 83rd percentile for colon cancer screening, again, well above the average or median 50th percentile for preventive care. So, my point for today is, is that if we are concerned about healthcare finance and we're concerned about horizontal and vertical integration across healthcare, where here is an example of potentially where vertical integration has done right in Kaiser. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Scene.